All right, and we're back with another edition of the Scotty No Show, it's episode 51. Um, was that your football number? No, I was 57. Close, Damn. though. We're Damn. coming up on it. Uh, uh, that voice you hear is Houston Lundy. Houston, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you're a longtime fan. I know that much. Probably a, probably a day one day one guy. Yeah, I've always enjoyed listening to it. You know, it's, it's good. I just enjoy listening to the show, man. So you have some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, for those that don't know you, uh, you uh, played uh, sports there at, uh, at Riggs. Um, you're one of the few people, and I am a big fan of people that do this, that uh, once played glass, uh, basketball with your glasses on. Yep. I, I was known as goggles for a few years. I got to college actually. And one of the guys that I'm throwing at, I'm throwing at Dakota state. And one of the guys I throw with, he, that's how he knows me. It's by goggles. <laughs> um, and on top of that, I believe it's your mom that makes fantastic egg rolls. Yeah. She's been planning on getting you some, she just hasn't gotten around to it. She's had a little busy, but hopefully we'll get you some here in the near future. Yeah. Um, no Ian this week. He's, uh, he's blind. He's, 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 he's got, he had eye surgery, I believe. Um, and, uh, no booth, no Aaron booth as previously, uh, scheduled. I believe he said he has practice right now. That that baseball team, they practice from nine to midnight every six days a week. Yeah. What the hell? Well, what's that? I'm lucky. Yeah. You know, that's the only time they have gym space, but I'm lucky. I get to practice anywhere between 11 and three. So, okay. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's get started with the show. Uh, since we've been gone, uh, we're now at the, uh, championship weekend. Yes, we are. So, um, last week the Rams defeated the Buccaneers and the 49ers defeated the Packers. Both excellent games. And then the AFC in the AFC, the Bengals defeated. Gosh, who did they beat? The Bengals. Um that, that was the one game I didn't watch, I'll be honest. Let's see. I, I honestly forgot. I can't believe that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, the Chiefs beat the Bills. We'll uh We'll, we'll get into that probably a little bit later. Oh, yeah. They beat the Titans. That's right. That's it. That's it. Yep. All of all of them uh, won score games. Man, was that one of the best weekends of football or what? You know, it was a great weekend to be a football fan. Other than my Vikings weren't playing in it, but. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're unfortunately one of us. Yeah. Um, what did you think of that uh, ending to the uh, Chiefs-Bills game? You know, I don't know. I, I have mixed emotions. You'd like to see the Bills get another chance on offense, but at the same time, defense wins championships. Yeah. Um, you think uh, you think there's going to be a rule change, finally? Mm, you know, I don't think so. I could see it staying this way. I'll be honest. I mean, I, personally, I want them to play the full overtime period, especially yep. in the playoffs. Yep. Even if it's just for the playoffs. Yep. I agree. I do. I did find it kind of interesting that overtime in the playoffs was five minutes longer than it is oh. in the regular season. Yeah, because the regular season they cut it down to ten, didn't they? Yep. Yep. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, the Rams and 49ers, I believe they've met in the NFC Championship game before. Uh, that was way back in the '80s and or '90s, I believe. But that's going to be your NFC championship game. Who do you have in that? You know, personally, I think I have the Rams. And I I can't bet against Matthew Stafford. Really? Okay. Yeah, I got the Rams. They do have a better defense. And it looked as if Debo Samuel was a little hobbled. Yep. And Trent Williams was on crutches last time I heard. Um. So basically they're down to uh, 
George Kittle. And um, that's it. So. I mean, stranger things have happened. Yep. And George I believe, Kittle. I believe the game is in Los Angeles. Yep. Um, if the Rams win, it'll be the second consecutive year that the uh, that a team will be playing in their home stadium for the Super Bowl. Of course, joining the Buccaneers. Uh, the Bengals and the Chiefs is your AFC championship game. The Chiefs have hosted, I believe, four straight AFC championship games. Yeah, I All saw the- that because Andy Reid was like the only coach to do it with two different teams. Yep. Um, they uh, The Eagles didn't host uh, every uh, NFC championship game that they played, though. Oh, so it was just making it to four, I yeah. Know, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Um, but the Bengals are in their first AFC championship game since 1988. Um, for those that don't know what happened there, they ended up winning. They ended up going to the Super Bowl. And they got their hearts ripped out by Joe Montana. Yep. So um, who do you got in this one? Um, you know, I don't really want to see Jackson Mahomes dancing. Thank you. At the Super Bowl. But I think that Patrick Mahomes will work some magic and that Chiefs team will get by. I have them by three. Yeah, I have them. It's like, I think my score was something around the, according to the simulation, it was like 27 to like 20, I think it was. So Chiefs, of course. Um, So, um, yeah, I think the Chiefs are going to win it. But I think the Bengals could do something, uh, especially considering that Jamar Chase uh, torched the Chiefs a couple of weeks ago. And I believe they may be without Tyron Matthew. So Yeah, that, that game a couple of weeks ago was crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that was in Cincinnati. This is in Arrowhead, so it's a little bit of a uh, – Different ball game. Uh, Sean Payton announced he was leaving the uh, the Saints this week. He's the coach of the Saints. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, I don't really know. I kind of, I know he was involved in all that Bounty Gate stuff, like especially with the Vikings in 09, but I don't know. I kind of liked John, Sean Payton as a coach. Yeah, I would. He seems like a. A uh, plenty good guy. Um, there was, uh, I mean, there was Bounty Gate, but there was also him being a little overconfident uh, right before the Minneapolis miracle happened. I don't yeah. know if you remember that, but um, yeah, um, it's probably going to be a matter of time before he takes the Cowboys drop, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I honestly have no clue what he, because he says he's what stepping away. Yeah, kind of a little retirement, but he'll. I I could see him coming back. Yeah, especially to the Cowboys because I believe him and uh, Jerry Jones are uh, pretty good pals. So, um, the Bears got a new GM. His name is Ryan Poles. Uh, that is a very interesting name. That's that that that's all I had on. <laughs> Ryan Poles. Yeah, Ryan nice. Poles. Um. He was drafted by the Bears in 2008, and now he's their GM. So he's pretty young, too. Yep. It's only 36. Yep. That's uh, only about five years older than I am. So uh, the uh, Jags also have a new coach. It's Byron Leftwich, as I predicted. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, hopefully, hopefully he can lead those Jags in the right direction. But, you know, they have a lot of young talent. It's just a matter of going and getting other guys that they can build a team around as well. Yep. Um, Of course, Byron Leftwich was the offensive coordinator at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's quarterback, Tom Brady, may or may not retire. Who knows? Uh He'll come back, I think. He'll definitely come back. He'll he'll definitely come back. 
and he doesn't, 50. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to leave on a loss. He wants to go out like Elway. Um and I forget, you're not a are you knowledgeable in the world of professional wrestling? I'm not. Okay. I haven't watched that much wrestling. Well, it's the Royal Rumble this weekend. Are you familiar with what the Royal Rumble is? I mean, I've heard about it. I mean, the last time I probably watched was when I was like a fifth grader. But... <laughs> so it's been a while. Yeah. But the Royal Rumble is this weekend. Um, that is that is a match that involves uh, 30 people uh, in the ring. Not usually at the same time, but... It's 30 people in one match. Usually takes like an hour. Uh, it's, I believe, in the stadium where the Rams used to play. So, in St. Louis. Okay. So, that's going to be fun. That is on Saturday. So, uh, fire up your Peacock app if you still have it. <laughs> um, for that. Anyways. Uh, Pete Davidson and Colin Jost are buying a ferry. Have you heard about this story? No, I have not. So you're aware of who Pete Davidson is, I'm sure. Yep. And then Colin Jost, the one of the hosts of Weekend Update, you know who he is. On kind SNL, of. I've heard of the name. Okay, yeah, yeah. Saturday Night Live. Um, they they are buying a ferry and turning it in Staten Island. And turning it into a nightclub. That sounds interesting and terrible at the same time. Yeah, that I don't know what to think about that. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be kind of fun though. It would. It would be fun, but you have to imagine those prices in order to get a spot on that ferry yes. are going to be very expensive. It's definitely something as a college student I will not be able to afford. Yes. Yes. Uh, speaking of things we probably can't afford, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this We Were Young Festival. Oh, I am not. I am oh, not. You, you have not seen this. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, rock and punk and emo bands all in Las Vegas. Um, it's over three days. Um, there's a ton of different bands. Uh, it was initially one day, then it was moved to two days. Now it's three days and, you know, a bunch of, uh, like Paramore, uh, My Chemical Romance, all of these, uh, bands are playing. This feels like a fire fest. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't really know. I'm more of like a lush life type of guy when it comes to music. Zara Larson, Reagan Bullway got me hit, um, hooked on that song. What exactly is, what is that exactly? Oh, I don't, I don't know. It's I've, just, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, well, I never heard of it until track last year, and then Bullway got me hooked on it. We listened to it on every bus ride. <laughs> wow. So yep. um, I've noticed we're kind of moving a little bit quicker. I'm I'll be honest, I'm I'm very tired. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. It's been a little bit of a long week, but oh yeah. Um it's going to get longer um probably as the week goes on, but um the MLB Hall of Fame class was announced this week. And David Ortiz is the lone um, is the lone baseball inductee. What yeah, are your that, thoughts on that? I was shocked, honestly. I thought um, I did not think he'd be the only one inducted. That's for sure. I mean, he's a good because, player. He's a good player. Do you think he deserves it though? Because he 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 was a DH. Yeah, that's basically saying you're you're in it because you can hit the ball but that's it that's it he's a yeah. one-way one-way player yes but i mean may. i can't i can't hate on him because he was good 
Yeah. It is. Yes, he I... may have. He may have played first base from time to time for the uh, for the Red Sox, but and the Twins. Which yet again, another player that Minnesota gave away. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad we signed Sano. <laughs> I mean, not Sano, Buxton. Buxton, not Okay. Sano. Okay. Not I was going I was gonna say Sano. Uh, <laughs> Sano probably struck out just hearing what you what what you said. He probably did. Um, I didn't mean to get his hopes up like that, being a Twins fan. Yeah. So, sorry, Bennett, if you're listening to this. <laughs> uh, but oh. oh, go ahead. I was surprised. I was honestly surprised that Barry Bonds didn't get in. I know yes, all of that you. stuff, but I really thought he would have got in this year. So I saw this stat, and I'm I didn't write it down, but I think this is pretty much how it went. That from 2001 to 2004. Barry Bonds reached base um, 94% of the time. Wow. He was either walked or he hit a home run. <laughs> he was insane. It was absolutely insane. He had an incredible on-base percentage. And there's a clip. Um, I don't know who they were playing against. It feels, it feels like something the Rockies would do, I'll be honest. But the bases are loaded, and they walked Barry Bonds intentionally. Yeah, I could see it. With the bases loaded. I could see it. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, but um, another one that um, kind of got me was Roger Clemens. Yeah, that one too. When I, I think... saw that. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Well. Yeah, when I saw that, I was just surprised because I, I really thought both of them would have got in over Ortiz, especially, but yeah. It is their it was their final year of induction. I believe they are now part of a a weird process. It's like the history of the game process or something like that now. But um, you know, with Barry Bonds. And Roger Clemens and Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, for that matter. Uh, the question needs to be, and A Rod can can never forget about A Rod. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, is can you write the history of baseball without those players? I don't think you can. It's, I mean, it's either, it's either you have to like say, well, you took. You did like PEDs and stuff, so it doesn't count, or you just have to realize that it takes much more than that to be able to yep. even hit the ball. Yep. I saw a uh, uh, a tweet today, and, and it was, uh, growing up means you finally realize that Barry Bonds and Pete Rose and Roger Clemens should all be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's true. It is very true. I mean, Don Mattingly should probably be in the Hall of Fame for, for, for that mustache alone. I mean, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing from a local perspective I, I wanted to get your, your take on, because you're an umpire, right? Yep, I am. So the softball season is – now in the spring that feels like you know with you also being an athlete that might be a little bit of a conflict for you know for time and stuff yeah so it being in the spring I don't know if I'm going to be able to umpire and stuff especially since I'm doing track and field here at Dakota State we have meets every Friday Saturday starting in at the end of March is which which will probably be when they start their season too Mm -hmm. so yeah that's it'll it'll kind of conflict with i don't know if you put it in the fall you would have had the same thing though so yeah what's but by the way i'm noticing what does your sweatshirt say it's just a carhartt one. Oh, oh you haven't burned it yet huh no <laughs> well, well have you seen that have you seen that 
I have not. I didn't even know have, about have it. Have you heard about like that story? Stuff. Okay. Uh-uh. So people are burning their Carhartt merchandise because Carhartt has like a vaccine mandate for its employees. <laughs> and it's like, the fuck are you doing? Like, so, so, sorry, excuse, sorry. We, 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 <laughs> we, we, we curse sometimes on the show if you haven't listened. Um, and chances are uh, some of you probably have not. Your mom is probably listening. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> um, she will. My grandma will probably listen to it too. <laughs> yeah. But but like, I mean, come on. Like they already have your money. That's that's just burning nothing, basically. They already have your money. What are you doing? No clue. But um, you know, I bought the sweatshirt, so I'm gonna wear it. That's how I see yeah. it. Actually, I didn't buy it. My brother brought it bought it for me. So ah, nice. Yeah. By the way, uh, thank you for your uh, shout out during that. Uh, what was that the Dakota State Classic or something? Yeah, like the that? Dakota State, sh- the Dakota State shootout. The men's teams are playing this weekend here, but I'm going to be out of town, so I can't do that one. But oh snap! Um, yeah, it, I, I didn't see who exactly was playing in all all of those games. Um. Well. I don't really remember. There was Howard playing. You had Flandreau Indian. You had the best game of the night, which was this Nebraska team. It was like Crooks or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but they were playing Hamlin, and that came down to the wire. Yep. So it was like number four in South Dakota versus number five in Nebraska. Crofton. It was Crofton. Crofton, yes. Crofton, which I believe is just across the border from Yankton. Mm Mm-hmm. But you can't um, forget that Hill City smacked Elkton Lake Benton in that. Oh yeah, got got revenge for volleyball season because they yeah. they beat us in uh, in state volleyball. Um, so you're younger than me, and so I have a feeling you uh, know of some uh, terms that are probably things that uh, people your age say. I might, I might. Have you heard this phrase, touch grass? I've heard it, but those are one of the phrases that I just go along with. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that means, but so I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So I, my interpretation of it is, is like, you know, I think it means, you know, like, just like go outside, do, 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 do something like touch grass, basically you know, get out a little bit more than what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, And then the urban dictionary has it as used when someone is doing something weird, stupid, or pointless. (laughs) I like that. I like that a lot. If that's the case, I've been touching grass a lot, especially in college with nothing to do. Um, living there in Madison. Um, have you been to one of my favorite spots, the stadium yet? Yes. Or does that does that still exist? Yes, it does. That's one of the most popular places in town. Okay, I believe my friend Andy might still work there. Um, I literally bought my car in the parking lot of the stadium. So <laughs> nice. Yep. Um. So this next little segment is. You know, I didn't really know if we should do a draft or not. I just wanted to have like a little discussion on people you dislike slash people you don't get the appeal of. All right. Well, I'm going to start out with my number one. I'm a Laker fan. I've been a Laker fan since Kobe, but I do not like LeBron. Okay. I I don't know. I just I just don't like how he carries himself. Did you see him, uh, I believe it was last night, talking to Austin Reeves and Austin Reeves looking just lost as heck? No, actually, you know, ever since LeBron started playing on the Lakers, I just started tuning out. So, By the way, today is the two-year anniversary of Kobe's death, RIP. Um, Yeah, I remember I was was sitting in my room. I think I was playing some Xbox, and then my older brother calls me and says, hey, turn on ESPN, and I'm like, 
he was like, Kobe died. And I'm like, no way. There's no way. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I yelled at people at work that day because I was crying. <laughs> um, I was too. <laughs> so my first is a two-parter. And it's Jackson Mahomes and Brittany Matthews. Yeah, I had um, a feeling Jackson Mahomes would be number one for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reason Jackson Mahomes with his with his TikToks, uh, in particular the one that he did on the Sean Taylor Memorial, um, completely rubbed me the wrong way. Completely rubbed me the wrong way. And Brittany Matthews, who is Patrick Mahomes' wife, I believe. Are they married? Oh, I thought they were. Okay. Were they not? The wife, girlfriend, side piece, it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, Brittany Matthews. Um, did you see what she did uh when the Chiefs clinched the uh clinched the game this past weekend? I I don't know what she do. Well, you know, because obviously her husband is our significant other is the quarterback of the team. So she's sitting in a suite and she opens up the suite and she has some champagne and she poured the champagne all over the people below her suite like a maniac. Like, how are those people going to drive home now? Just imagine getting pulled over on the, on the way home and you smell like champagne yeah. and all that. Yeah. It's like, come on, what, what are you doing? Like <laughs> that there might be kids down there. <laughs> Can you imagine like look, little Timmy's getting drunk off of the quarterback of the, the wife of the quarterback throwing what like champagne on down on him. Like, come on. Just imagine going back to school on Monday and saying that, Patrick Mahomes' fiance or wife was just feeding you some wine or champagne. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> upper decker. Yep. Um, do you have any more? Um. Well, my number two was I couldn't really come down to names, but it's Packer fans that don't like Aaron Rodgers on their team. Weirdly enough, uh. My number two is Aaron Rodgers himself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of ironic. Uh, explain your pick, though. So especially I got to Madison. There are a couple of Packers fans, and they're from Wisconsin. And they're like, you know, I don't like Aaron Rodgers because he's not for the city. He's not for the city. So I don't like Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, dude, you guys could have started Jordan Love this year and went 2-15. and 15, But yeah. Um, I don't like Aaron Rodgers because I think he's a little self and self-absorbed. Um, he thinks a little too highly of himself. Uh, there was that whole um thing uh, when he got drafted, how he said, um, "How so sad are you that the 49ers didn't draft you?" And he said, "Not as sorry as the 49ers w- will be." Or something like that. <laughs> and then he proceeds to go 0 and 4 against the 49ers in the playoffs. That's I think that's just karma coming right back at him. Yeah. And then Speaking, he oh go what ahead. do you do? What do you do? No, you can and, and and then he uh he was on Pat McAfee this week, as he always is. And he talked about how a lot of people were rooting against him be, or against the Packers because of his vaccination status and honestly i think it was just because i think people just don't like the packers honestly i don't know i feel like that's a hard team to like they are personally yeah because like when you if you're a member of the packers and you want to complain to an owner you literally have to complain to like fifty thousand people because it's owned by the fans yeah, you sh- usually you can just turn to a fan and they usually have something in them. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your number three? Do you have, do you have five for, by the I way? I tried to get, I tried to get five. Okay. My number three, but my number three was just Packer fans in general. 
<laughs> so I had, I had Packer fans that hate Aaron Rodgers because it kind of be nice to have Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback because he's it good. Would. But my number three is Packer fans. If he played on any other team, I'd be fine with him. Me too. Oh, I heard people want him to go to the Broncos, I heard, but I don't know. Well, well it only makes sense for the quarterback to – has only won one Super Bowl to go to Denver and try and win another. Wait, has that happened before? Did somebody do that already? Gosh, I think it has. Oh. Oh, what, what was his name? Was it <laughs> was it Peyton Manning? Did oh, Peyton yeah. Manning do that? Peyton Manning, yep. Um, my number three is actually three people. It's... <laughs> It's it's Flo and Jamie from Progressive and Jake from State Farm. You don't like Jake from State Farm? <laughs> I I find his commercials to be the most annoying things I've ever seen in my life. Like there's that one where the, like he's at his house and the delivery person gives him like way more food than he ordered. And I'm like, I don't think Jake from State Farm or, ordered that much food. And like he just accepts it. And it's like, bro, give back the food. Somebody else can eat that. You don't have to eat that, Jake, from State Farm. <laughs> and then oh. Flo and Jamie from Progressive, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I like Jamie more than Flo, if I have to be honest. But I, don't, I can see where you're coming from. Yep. You know, I guess my number four would have to be Probably the Rogers rate commercials. Oh, that Rogers rate to Patrick Price. Yeah. Oh, I hate those commercials so much. I mean, th th there's not much you have to say about that, honestly. No, I think the name explains itself. The Rogers rate. This this one this one is going to be very controversial. I like some of their music, but goodness gracious, where in the world did all of these BTS fans come from? Couldn't tell you. Like, have you seen like what, like just like one of their tweets can get like 10 million likes. And it's like, how is that possible? So kind of like Charlie on TikTok. <laughs> oh, Ch Charlie D'Amelio, the, the, the D'Amelio <laughs> sisters. Yeah, yeah th th them too. And Addison Ray. Wow, you're making me think of all these different people that I don't like. <laughs> um, I I kind of like Bryce Hall. That's the only one that I kind of like. But um, as far as those TikTok people, um, I'm going to go ahead and go with my number five, and it's Lamar Jackson. Real? Oh, I was going to mention Lamar Jackson earlier, too. That's one yep. of mine, but only for one reason. He underperformed in my fantasy this year. Yep. And I like, I just like, everybody's like, oh my God, he's so great. He's such a great quarterback. And I'm like, he's not even better than Josh Allen. He's not better than Joe Burrow. He's probably better than Baker Mayfield. Let's be real. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, by the way, the Baker Mayfield commercials. Get those out of here. <laughs> um, do you have any more? Um, yes. So I was Dakota State out of basketball game this weekend, and Peyton Harrell and I, one of my buddies, were sitting front row, and we're easily the loudest ones in the arena. But something happened, and we jumped up and called a block call or something, and the ref threatened to kick us out. So... That guy has to be my number five. <laughs> oh, that's, I that's, think... that's another one for me. Uh, every ref that calls a technical on Jackson Edmund after he <laughs> does a dunk. I mean, oh. just let the, let the kid dunk for God's sakes. Let the kid yeah. dunk. So I was, I, I'm registered in basketball too, to officiate. And at my region meeting that actually came up when he, had his dunk at Rapid City Central, his first one, I guess, of the technicals. Yep. And that came up, and everyone was like, should it be, should it not be? And I'm like, 
Well, I think he was just saving himself. So yep, that's usually what he's always doing because there's usually either somebody that he could land on and potentially hurt himself, or there's somebody behind him and he kind of needs to hold on a little bit to let that guy pass through. Um, that that's just what I see from my point of view. But then again, I might be biased. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm a little biased too, but I was I just like seeing the posters, seeing them. Yeah. Uh, potential future guests po- also possibly. I, I don't know if I can get him to talk, though. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He is quiet he, until he, you start talking to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, by the way, did you see uh, John uh, Winkler's uh, tweet today? It was like... John's tweet today? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was today. And oh, the was, one about the dunk contest? Yes, where it was like <laughs> every time Jackson dunks in a game, and it's the uh, gif of uh, Wheel of Fortune and Vanna White's just T, 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 T. T. It's like so many T's. Um, yeah, I love Jackson. I, I've, I've been a fan of Jackson before he even knew who I was. So, yeah. Hopefully they can get their season turned around, but. Yeah, I'll definitely be rooting for them. I I want to see him play. Got Some a more. uh got a tough game. I believe it's this weekend against O'Gorman. Uh so that's not gonna be easy. I believe that's in Sioux Falls. Yeah. On what's that? Thir- Friday? I want to say it's yeah, Friday. Friday. I'm coming back to Pier tomorrow and Friday, and then I'll drive Friday night down to watch the game. So Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, you're probably coming back for for yep. yep um so but by the way i guess we should we should probably acknowledge that um we should uh rest in peace greg dean um i am very nervous to have to speak at the uh prayer service tomorrow yeah i would be too that's just something like i i got the news and i couldn't imagine it yeah, it he was he was supposed to come on this show at, at some point. Um I remember uh we were in it was uh, the uh football the it was one of the football things and it was a football coming home thing. And so we're sitting in the uh in that little hallway right before you get into the gym. Yep. And, you know, we're talking about things that we can talk about. And he's like, sorry, Scotty, we can't talk about professional wrestling. I, d- I haven't watched professional wrestling in like 30 years. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're, you're probably like an AWA guy or something. You probably know, you know, Baron Von Raschke. And he did the claw. Greg did the claw, you know, thing to me. And I'm like, oh, my God, he knows exactly who I who I was talking about. Yeah, that's if there was any sports question, Greg Dean would know it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, now Bennett, I think Bennett knows everything, too, with sports. Yeah, I believe he. I believe he was the one uh, Bennett is the one that if you ask him any player that's played at Duke in the past 15 years, he could probably tell you what town he was from. Yeah, he probably could. He could probably tell you their birthday yeah. too. It's like, where's where's Trey Jones from? It's like, oh, Apple Valley. It's like, what? Yeah, I'm a Duke fan too, but that's hardcore Duke fan. Yeah. Um. W- w- what are you thinking of the uh, of the season so far? You know, I feel like it's like every other Duke season. We'll play these unranked, lose to a couple of them, play close, like our game last night only one by two but i don't know i have high hopes especially since it's coach k's last year yep so and bancaro is amazing oh man you know what the you know what my favorite thing is and if i still drank uh i would totally take a shot every time uh an announcer does this have you noticed whenever there's a duke game that at least once in a game 
an announcer will compare Trevor Keels to a linebacker. <laughs> You'd be taking quite a few. Yeah, I know. Shots. Every every game, he's like, oh, you know, Tre- Trevor Keels, you know, it reminds me of a football player. It's like, okay, we get it. <laughs> um, did you by chance happen to watch, I believe it was Oregon and Arizona playing last night? Was that the 10 o'clock game? Yeah. Yeah, I went to bed early. I had lifting, okay. so. Well, um, probably my favorite uh, college basketball uh, color commentator, Bill Walton, was calling the game. Okay. And he said something about, he was like, Oregon State's still a great football, uh, great basketball team. Oregon State's record is like 2-11. and 11. <laughs> So, like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? great basketball team they're two and 11 come on that's not great no i don't know maybe he's just trying to make them feel not bad make them feel better about themselves so um you know other than uh you know the uh championship games this weekend i of course am looking forward to um well next week is my week to review movies and on Thursday, there is the um, Jackass Forever uh, premiere at the uh, theater. And there's like a special fan appreciation thing where there's bonus content. So I don't oh. know what the hell that means. Speaking of movies, what do you think about like the new Spider-Man? I loved the new Spider-Man. Um. I am a little nervous about them trying to reinvigorate the uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. I, I don't, I don't know if I really need to see any more Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. I, I think yeah. it ended pretty well. Um, we were actually having this conversation at supper tonight, and it was who they thought was the best Spider-Man, and a lot of people said Holland. Yep, and he's all he's the. Com- He's the most character accurate, by the way. And um, all the girls said no because he's too short. But all the guys said yes, it was him. Okay. So I think they were going by looks. They said McGuire. Really? Yeah, all the girls said McGuire, but all the guys said Tom Holland. It was kind of surprising. Tom Holland is the most uh, age-appropriate Spider-Man because Spider-Man, when he – when you get down to it, he's supposed to be like 16 years old. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's not supposed to be, well, what was Toby Maguire when he made that like 30? Yeah, I think so. He was yeah. a lot older than Tom. Yeah. I mean, Tom is like maybe 15, 16 years old uh, at the time that they originally started. I think he was like maybe 17, mm-hmm. but um. I have the movie right down there. Uh, have you seen Dune? Because I have not yet. I have not either. Okay. That is on my list of movies to watch um, at some point. I'm very excited because there is rumors that I believe Tom Holland and Zendaya might have broken up because Zendaya uh, had a thing with Timothy Chalamet on the set of Dune. So I heard about this. I think I heard about this. Yes. So I am intrigued to see if there's any on-screen chemistry between the two, even though I've heard Zendaya's only in the movie for like 10 minutes. But <laughs> did you watch the um the one about Kurt Warner? I have not yet. I've heard great things about that but i also feel like i will hate it because you know having lived through you know that entire season i will be like wait where's ray lewis in all of this where's where's uh you know i mean like how who do they have playing steve mcnair you know i these are the questions that i have even if I don't even think Steve McNair is probably in the movie, but 
So in my opinion, I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. But I feel like the buildup, you needed the background, but I think it took too long to get to the good stuff. Really? Okay. That's what I think personally. You can spoil, you can spoil this, this uh, um, part of it for me. Uh, is there any high V Brandon? When he was at the grocery store? Yeah. Um, I guess I wasn't paying attention enough to notice, but all I remember was him stocking shelves. Okay. So he, he did work at a high V in, I think, yep. Des Moines, I think. So either Des Moines or Davenport. I can't remember what town. Actually, it might've been Cedar Rapids. Pretty sure it was actually Cedar Rapids, but, um, I'm really into kids movies. So really you already know, you already know I went to sing too. How was that? I enjoyed it. I love movies like that. Okay. Cause my favorite part of that entire thing is Matthew McConaughey. Um, I love, I, lo- I love seeing, well, I don't even know what he is. I think he's like a raccoon or something like that mm-hmm. or a koala bear or something like that. And then there's Taron Edgerton as like a gorilla, like a singing gorilla or something like that. And he, I believe it was because of Sing, the first one, that yep. he got the uh, job as Elton John um, in, uh, in Rocket Man. So that, that's right. You uh, didn't you work at the movie theater? No, I didn't. I worked at Walmart. Oh, I was a Walmart right. guy. Yep. I was the. I sent you the picture of the Fruity Pebbles syrup. Did you ever try that? Yeah. I have not. I have not. I. Uh, I've. I found it though. I certainly found it. But I have not tried it yet. No. I haven't either. I'm. I'm kind of scared. They made cereal syrup cereal. Wait. There's well, cereal? cereal, the cereal, the cereal into the syrup. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say, like, what? I mean, I've seen some crazy cereals, but like, I don't have any space in my cupboard anymore. So, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've too much cereal, and I feel like I've also, and I knew this would happen, um, when I started Scottish Crunchy Critiques. I'm all cereal'd out. I don't know if I want to eat cereal anymore. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's it's just if you have a different uh, chip or a different um, like snack of some sort or a different uh, soda, go ahead. I'll I'll take all of those. Um, by the way, very very good. I think I reviewed it on the show two weeks ago actually um uh mountain dew spark do you know about this no i've I've tried to kind of stay away from pop i'll have one here and there but in sports i try to stay away from it good good on you um mountain dew spark is it's mountain dew with um with like a raspberry lemonade flavoring Ooh. Yes, and it is delicious. Um, something that I have recently gotten into because with the advent of or with me not drinking or anything like that, which by the way, what is like Bud Light? What wh- what are you doing? Like y- y- you come out with a hard cola after I quit drinking? Like, come on. <laughs> They're just trying to tempt you back. They're trying they, to they get, are, they really are. Money. Like they have a hard cola, a hard cherry cola, a lemon lime, like that's supposed to taste like Sprite. And apparently they go down so easy, but I'm like, uh, I don't, I, I want to, but I don't want to at the same time. I kind of, honestly, I almost want to pay somebody to review <laughs> it for Scottish Crunchy Critiques. I honestly do. But um, this is what I've been drinking. It's Splash Blast. Um, it is water um, that's flavored. This is pineapple mango flavored. They have acai grape, uh, wild berry, and mandarin orange, which is my favorite. Um, you can find this 
in that uh area right above the uh water um the water packs like the big 24 packs that area right above Wal- in walmart you, you know aisle 28 there. no aisle 29 aisle 29 yep yep you can find these in six packs for a dollar 67 oh that's pretty cheap yeah for flavored stuff yeah so um that's basically I, that's I've basically gotten hooked all on I science have. i've gotten hooked Ooh. on science that's what i've got hooked on so especially okay. before track meets and stuff i'll drink a science or sometimes even two that's a lot of caffeine but oh yeah it tastes good i i feel like i have to special order it at some point i feel like i Uh-oh, will I think... what's that oh you just froze for a little bit oh um at some point i'm going to uh special order it um that zoa energy it's the rocks energy drink okay i had that I was at a Where? track meet. I had it. It was in Brookings at it was on it was um at a gas station in Brookings. What? South of campus. Yep. Oh my God. I don't know what to think of it. Cause it's if, you, if do you think it's in Madison? I don't know, but I know it's in Brookings. I haven't seen it in Madison yet on all three gas stations we have. Okay. If you find it. Bring you it find it, I'll get you. you one. Okay. Because I am, I, I want to try that. Because if it's anything like the Rocks tequila, it's going to be good. <laughs> so. Do you like tea? I do. Then I think you'll probably like it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get into iced coffee. That's something I actually kind of don't get the appeal of. Because like I like my coffee to be warm and to also have like a weird. I, I'm a big French vanilla guy. I don't know why. Yep. Um, you know it has that French vanilla, ca- caramel. That that's a that's another people that I that I dislike. People that say caramel instead of caramel, I hate them. <laughs> um, you know. I've learned so many things coming to college, like how people say crook or crack instead oh, of crick. 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 Yeah. Crick. Yeah. Or how in Canada it's called a Chesterfield instead of a couch. What? Yeah. What? There's a lot of things like that. Wait, there's they, can, there's Canadians at, at DSU. There is. They've we have, we have people from like England too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't don't ask them what they call a bundle of sticks. It's not a good. It's not a good term. <laughs> it's not a good term. They also, also say they also say hammock is hammock. Yeah, they say mock. I don't. I don't like that. Also, uh, you know, there's a famous pro wrestling moment where uh, Mick Foley or Mankind got thrown off of a uh, a you know what they call the hell in a cell. He got thrown off of it into a table pretty famous gif um you know be careful what you say because tossed off means something completely different in england (laughs) so um not gonna get into that (laughs) um but uh yeah that's uh basically all i have we actually went i believe the full hour so um do you have any closing thoughts you know, I really don't other than a lot of driving ahead of me and a lot of track meets. So yeah. um, stick around for the uh, post-show debriefing. But um, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, enjoyed it.